Hello there, welcome to the show. The hors d'oeuvres out the way <laughs> yesterday in Baku. Told you not to say that. <laughs> Time to move on to the main course in Madrid. Just 48 hours away, the Champions League final almost upon us. Craig Burley, Alejandro Moreno with me. Adrian Healy here in the studio. We know Liverpool have been in Spain for a while. Spurs arrived in Madrid yesterday. But, of course, the big question, all the Madrilenos awaiting the arrival of the one and only Steve Nichol. And they have been rewarded. There he is, Dan. <laughs> Thomas is with our man, Dan. I know. He ma Go on. Who would have thought grown man makes the destination he intended to get to would be headline <laughs> news, but you made it, Stevie. Piece of kick, season traveller. Yeah, no problem. Old heart. And are you excited now? Does it really feel that you're going to see the Champions League final? Not quite yet. I'm still, uh, I'm still bubbling up slightly, but no, I'm getting there. Now, the big question is, when we watch the game together in the green room, so we all sit there... Like you maybe watch a bit with us and then you get too tense and you have right. to leave. You have to, to get out and watch it on your own. Mm. On this occasion, you're stuck next to me throughout the whole match. Um, I wouldn't like to be stuck next to me for the whole of the match, particularly if it doesn't go well. So I think you better watch out. There'll be a few flying elbows, a few tackles up in the stand for me probably. But, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely be uptight, but I will be in control. Yeah, right. Uh, let's talk about the big talking news going into this game. Harry Kane. Would you start him? If he's 100% fit, do you start him if you're Maurizio Pochettino? If he's 100% fit, I would start him. But I don't think he is. You know, when, when Pochettino said a few days ago that he'd only just joined them full time, that, that worried me. That's not enough time to test out his ankle properly. So I've kind of gone from initially I was saying play him regardless to I think you keep him. You've got Lucas Moura and Son who are absolutely flying. So, you know, it's not a, it's not a bad second, a second guess. Boys, what do you think? Mm. It is the big talking point, isn't it? Actually, talk. Well, yeah, and also the fact, how is he caught when we're watching YouTube in Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> That's the other talking point. Don't they have subtitles? Because you know, you, know, you know he's watching it out there. He's just not getting the lingo. Look, I, I, uh, I, know, I, I said a few weeks ago, or whatever it was when Tottenham got to the final, that it's not quite as simple as, uh, oh, Harry Kane's available, Harry Kane plays, because... Only Pochettino can really see and make that decision. For the reason Stevie just talked about is, is one, he hasn't been back in training that long, and two, it's almost two months since he played a competitive game. Now, we all know as players, former players, you can train and train and train. It's a bit like pre-season, but when, that, when those games start for real, you're not up to speed. And we're talking about a Champions League final here, so mm. uh, Tottenham have copped admirably, admirably without him with Son and Mora. And I just wonder if it's a, if it's a scenario where Harry Kane, Kane is on the bench uh, and he has to play a part off the bench purely because of his match sharpness. Mm. Yeah, you just look at the fact that if you're Mauricio Pochettino, if you start Harry Kane, you know full well that you've already conditioned yourself to one substitution, and that is Harry Kane is not going to last the 90 minutes, at least not quality 90 minutes, and so therefore you already tie yourself up that you're going to have to make that change. That's not a way to approach a final where you don't know exactly what's going to happen. And so if you're Harry Kane and you have given feedback to, say, the doctors and Pochettino, you, what are you going to tell them? You're going to tell you feel great. You want to play. Of course, you're, you're the player. Pochettino and the medical staff have to have the bigger picture and understanding. You know what? How about we get 65 minutes out of Lucas Moura? How about we get them in a position where we are... We're there or thereabouts in the game, and then we tell Harry Kane, Harry Kane, go out there, give us the best 25 minutes you can give us, and see if you can get a game-winning goal for us or a game-tying goal, whatever the circumstance is. But you don't want to go into the game knowing full well that you're going to have to take the guy out even before the game starts. Stevie, he's a striker. He says he's fine. He says he'll be desperate to play. Mauricio Bocciatino is going to take that on board, isn't he? You know, at the end of the day, Pochettino has to be strong and has to decide what's best for the team and, and not get involved in whether Harry, Harry Kane's a legend there already or not. It's about the team. Uh, and if he's going to do that and make it about the team, then I don't think he starts them. You know, you, Spurs can't afford to start a game, possibly a man down. I mean, they just can't. They can't, they can't afford to get in a situation uh, to be two or three down like they have done previously. Somehow, a miracle, they've got themselves out of it. You can't expect to do that against Liverpool. Yet somehow, Stevie, on the Liverpool side of things, it's OK for Roberto Firmino. He only played as a sub, uh, you know, May the 1st, that 3-0 defeat to Barcelona's barely played since then. 
Yeah, but his his injury is completely a, a different injury than than Harry Kane's. You know, it's it's an injury that that takes what three weeks. Harry Kane's is a is a serious problem. Uh, he's had it before, uh, and so the Firmino injury is completely. I, it's, it's just one of those injuries that you pick up that takes two or three weeks to get it done and dusted by staying off it. And he probably would have been he would have been fit before now had he not tried to play, what, 20 minutes? So, nah, not a problem. Firmino, absolutely 100% uh, fit. And he, in my opinion, he will be much fit. Mm. So you also look at what Tottenham did against Ajax, OK? And what they did against... Uh, uh, I think Hakeem played against Man City, didn't he? I think the, fir- he did. the first the, leg. The first, the first leg. Yeah. But then you look at what Liverpool were able to do against Barcelona uh, with, with two men down in their attacking position. So it can be... It's not as if Tottenham don't have options, you know. Mm. Obviously, there's a, the Laurenti option, which will definitely be only off the bench. But the way that Mora and, and Son have fit... And Tottenham have, have had a few knocks. I think they, most of them, including Harry Wink, should be OK. But I think you look at what they've done and then you look at it and say, well, as Ali said, if you go onto the pitch with a guy who's one of the best in the business but isn't fully fit... And all of a sudden, you know, you'll quickly work out if you're Virgil van Dijk and whoever's partnering him, just how fit he is, compared to the fact that, you know, a, a fully fit Mora and, and Son, with that pace running in behind, is a bigger headache for that Liverpool back four than a 60-70% fit Harry Kane. So it is a big decision for Pochettino. He'll be watching him in training. I would understand from the player's point of view absolutely why he wants to play, but... If Pochettino thinks it's for the good of the team, uh, that he doesn't, he comes off the bench, then that's good management. Mm. Yeah, the decision that Pochettino has to make is, is 80% or whatever percentage he's up to now of Harry Kane, is that better than whatever else I have available? And the truth of the matter is that I don't think that that's the case. If, if Spurs are going to be successful in this game, they're going to have to defend well in the midfield. They're going to have to defend well in, in, in the first and third. They're going to have to be solid. They're going to have to be tactically aware and disciplined. All of those things are not improved by Harry Kane's presence on the field. He gives them an option in the attack, an option that we would be wonderful to have coming off the bench where you can maximize however many minutes he can be on the field. The other scenario in which he starts, you're just trying to stretch him as long as you can. And I don't think that's ideal for Kane or Spurs. Steve, the uh, psychology often plays so much into a big final. From a Liverpool perspective... Uh, What do you think their psychology is going to be, whether they see the name Harry Kane on or not on that starting eleven? Listen, I think like most players, if if one of if one of the star players and the opposition is not on the team sheet, that does definitely give you a a bit of a lift. But at the same time, you know the way Klopp goes about his business and the way he winds this team up, they'll be thinking about themselves. They'll 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 really not be overly wondering or, or, or worried about what Spurs are going to do because Liverpool know that if they play to their best they're better than Spurs that's, that's what they'll be concentrating on A lot more about the match of course over the next couple of days but Stevie uh, we of course went to a tapas bar today I'm trying to expand your palate slightly you tried most of it but you refused the snails Yeah I mean no too slimy but you didn't even try it a little bit, no. just just for the. I took one look at it and that was enough. It's not. It wasn't happening. To be cuttlefish. To be fair, it was like trying to feed my feed my five year old. <laughs> like, the way in which, you, but not even with the snails, just everything else. Everything else that was new. Well, I'm just stuck in my ways, I guess you could say, Dan. Yeah, well, that's not a big surprise, is it? <laughs> Chances of you getting me out, though. Yeah. Pretty slow. Well, you haven't done it for, what, 55 years? Oh, you're not, you yeah, not going to start now. Nope. Um, a lot more uh, from that, of course, later on in the week. Cannot wait. Did you know? Did you know? Late spring is sale season. <laughs> Shallow your life as you want to. You can't wait to see them eating in a restaurant for even longer. <laughs> hey, here, here's an important aspect of all of this. I know Stevie's gone, right? So no shepherd's pie is being served at right. the golf club. Well, I had the shepherd's pie oh, because somebody okay. had to have it. You better leave I, some for what he, well, what he no, gets No, 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 I had to have it. We will uh, give you the full you evidence uh, of Steve's uh, snail eating or otherwise up. on tomorrow's <laughs> edition of the show. <laughs> ESPN FC as we continue the countdown from Madrid to the big final. Oh, yes, the silly season is almost upon us. You can get uh, your fill of uh, transfer talk over at our website, ESPNFC.com. How about some of the real thing? Let's go back out to Madrid, where Dan appears to have found Gab and Skid. Thank you very much, Aid. Sid, let's start with you and Antoine Griezmann. Marcus say that Barca are calling off their interest. 
Well, Barcelona are, are concerned about the response from some of the players who, who are not that convinced by the idea. But I, I would be reluctant to rule this out at this point. I, I think we, we know that Barcelona had a deal in place with him last year. We know that Griezmann wanted Barcelona to put that deal back in place this year. And we know that there was a willingness to do that. What we don't know is if it's signed and done. But, of course, it, I think intuitively, at least, it doesn't make a lot of sense for Griezmann to publicly say... I'm going to go if he doesn't have his destination sorted out, which is not, by the way, to guarantee that it's Barcelona. Yeah, on that point, what happens if it's not Barcelona and he's just left in this weird limbo? Well, because he won't be. Right. Um, someone somewhere is going to pay, gonna pay that money and, and someone somewhere will come to an agreement with him. And I suppose in the very worst case scenario, maybe he can go back to Atletico and say, <laughs> you know that thing about leaving? Can I, can I hang around for a bit longer? I mean, he did last year. Is Neymar coming back? Well, this is a curious one, and, and, and given the choice between these two players, the dressing room heavyweights, fundamentally Luis Suarez and Messi, mm. would take Neymar ahead of Griezmann. There's no two ways about that. Now, the board of directors know that this is a far more difficult deal to do. Let's not forget that Griezmann can be bought. Why? Because his buyout clause is 120 million euros from the 1st of July. And by the way, I think we may have to wait for the 1st of July right. for this to happen. Neymar will cost a lot more than that, unless Paris Saint-Germain are put in a position where they're forced to save. I just... I'm not see, sure I see the mechanisms by which this can be made to happen. That's not to say there isn't interest, because there is. Right. But I just don't see the mechanism to make it happen. If Julian was here, Gabby goes, no way PSG would sell him. No, I mean, it would have to be something where Neymar forces a move, where Paris Saint-Germain uh, comes out, and uh, maybe because of financial fair play restrictions, they're in a position where they're forced to sell. Um, but the reality is, Neymar also got a huge pay rise when he went to when he went to PSG, and he cost so much money. And if he comes back, not only are you not getting Griezmann, you're also not getting help at the back either, which which is another issue, another player that obviously that they've been linked with a lot, Matthijs de Ligt. Mm -hmm. Now, it's all into links, obviously. But then what about the future of Coutinho? Well, look, Coutinho, uh, in a way, his situation is slightly clearer than those other two, which is that this is a player that Barcelona recognised hasn't succeeded, a player that they believe that they could get good money for and therefore help to, to finance deals for other players. But, of course, there's a difference between believing you can get a good deal for a player and then actually finding the club that will do this. And, and certainly, you've paid close to 150 million euros for, for Coutinho. Once all the objectives have, have been put into place, you're not going to find someone who pays that kind of money for him now. Now, obviously, you then can decide, do we take a hit? How much of a hit? Is losing his wages from our, from our budget a good thing as well? The answer, of course, there is yes. But I think it's harder to make this happen than, than they think. But Barcelona right now, if someone comes in and says, we'll take him off your hands and we'll pay a huge fee, they say yes in a heartbeat. What about Valverde? What was the defining factor as to why they kept him? Because 24 hours before, everyone was reporting he was gone. Well, I mean, first of all, one of the reasons that they, that they reported he's gone was because one of, the, one of the Catalan media went with this story so strongly, mm. so clearly, that everybody else kind of thought, right, OK, so if we're going this powerfully, there must be something in this. Now, obviously, there are a couple of things to point out here. One is that you have a board of directors with different opinions upon which there are a number of directors who wanted him gone and probably believe they could make that happen. But the bottom line is you come to a president who pre Copa del Rey final has said, I'm not selling him, who would look, uh, sorry, selling him, letting him go, who would look incredibly foolish now if it happens immediately. Bear in mind, it's very early in the summer. Yeah. I'm not ruling out another twist here. And so right now it has to stick with him. And then there's someone else in all of this who's very, very important. Leo Messi. Of course. Meanwhile, here in Madrid, the big story today, a press conference called for Sergio Ramos. Uh, you were going to go to the press conference, Gab. Basically, they said, you don't have accreditation, you can't go. And Gab said, Gab Marcotti is my accreditation. So they, yeah, this is my accreditation. <laughs> did they let you in? Of course. No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. This is what a weird thing. 45-minute press conference to tell you that nothing's happening. Well, to tell you that he's staying, but I think it was it was necessary after Florentino Perez coming out and, and effectively saying, look, Sergio Ramos came to me and said, hey, look, I want to go to China and uh, I want to go for free because with the new rules that they have in China, yep. it's difficult for them to go and, and, and pay a big fee. And effectively, Sergio Ramos came out and said, look, I may go to China one day. If I leave Real Madrid, it's not going to be for, for a rival team. So for the time being, though, I'm staying effectively kind of contradicting or having a very different recollection from what Florentino yeah. said. I mean, it was extraordinary because 
you know, some of these other things we're talking about, there, there are elements that, that, that escape us. There are elements that we don't know about. This is clear cut, and it was extraordinary today, listening to Sergio Ramos, who, by the way, these stories first filtered out in Ramos's absence. He wasn't in Spain, he was away. This filters out while he's away. Now, obviously, he's got a mobile phone. I'm sure he was aware of these things. He comes back to encounter this situation in which the two filtered stories are then followed by the president publicly saying, Ramos came to me and I said, you can't go for free. Notice that for free. Yeah. He didn't say you can't go. You can't go for free. This had come from the presidential side of things. Ramos comes back and says, I don't know where these stories come from. I don't know where these rumours come from. Well, Sergio, I'll tell you what, have a listen to the recording of your president on the radio. This isn't a rumour. Or if it is a rumour, it's a rumour publicly said by yeah. your president. And by the way, I am not at all ru ruling out the possibility that quite a lot of this has been overplayed and that quite a lot of this has been... Um, shall we say, manipulated, and Ramos is in cat of this situation and has decided, I've got to say something, partly, of course, because he didn't get that move that potentially was there. Meanwhile, Gab, in Italy, Spalletti out, no surprises there, Antonio Conte, heavily linked to the job. However, there's a caveat, he's saying if he takes over, he wants a Cardi out. To a point, uh, basically what he's come out, uh, what, what, what has emerged, and he hasn't signed yet, he could be signing on Friday, could... could could eventually be delayed till Monday. Uh, he says part of his plans are, you know, he wants a defender. That's going to be Godin. He wants a midfielder. He'd love to have Barella. He wants a striker, and it could be Lukaku or Dzeko. Um, but that means Icardi gone. And the wild card here is Mauro Icardi has already let it be known. No, 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 no. I'm staying. Yep. I love Inter. I'm Inter through and through. I have so much confidence, and I'm such a great guy. I'm sure that I can convince Antonio Conte, if he does come, to keep me and play me because that's how attached I am to the club. Sticking with Italy, Sarri and the rumours of him going to Juventus just won't go away. Where's he going to be at the start of next season, Chelsea or Juve? I have no idea because this story has yet to be written. What we do know is obviously Juventus... Uh, we saw Andre Agnelli meeting with Bruce Buck in Baku. Um, Fali Ramadani, who's the agent, the intermediary who's dealing with this. Uh, he's flown to London. He hopes to meet with, with Chelsea. Chelsea, I think, have made it pretty clear that they're not going to sack Maurizio Sarri, contrary to what people thought. And if they do want him, he has to resign, and they want compensation uh, as well. So this could be a bit of a power play here. Um, I wonder, and this is just a hunch, I wonder if maybe... Sadi is in a bit of a plan B, and Juventus have somebody else in mind he could, who could be their plan A, who they think it's going to be really difficult to get him, but maybe they're going to take a run at him, have Sadi on standby, then if Sadi becomes too expensive, move to plan C, who would probably be somebody like Simone Inzaghi. Thank you very much, Agenza. For more from Gab, you can download the latest edition of the Serie Awesome podcast, which is available now. But for now, back to the studio, eh? Thanks very much, uh, Dan. More from Dan and Sid at the end of the show. Extra time at your choice questions answered. Remember, you can always catch that on our YouTube channel as well. In the Eastern Conference, they lead over Philadelphia by a point. Montreal, another point behind. Atlanta within three points of the top now. And a whole bunch of games coming your way this weekend in MLS. It will start Friday night with the Canadian clash in Vancouver. We'll have that game on ESPN2 for you as well on Saturday night. That's the reopening at the Portland Timbers Stadium as they welcome LAFC as the visitors. Now, all the juiciest bits of the week uh, co coalesce into one oh. place, uh, including oh. that, Craig. Remember that? Oh. Uh, best best oh. of the week uh, on our YouTube channel. See at the end of every week. Uh, Ahead of the meeting of Liverpool and Spurs in Madrid. There was another big meeting in Madrid, Dan. I, I believe Sid and Steve coming face to face for the very first time. Well, that's right. If you think that I've got a big man crush on Sid, <laughs> Sid is taking it to the next level today by meeting Stevie Nickel, which, of course, the is one and only. Literally one of your boyhood heroes. <laughs> Let, let's, not, let's not go too far here. All right, okay. Um, <laughs> one of the boyhood people I quite liked. Right, okay. <laughs> Is that it? No. That's Is that what we've got? No. Got to say oh, do, you want, do you want oh, more? Do Steve, oh, no, I think, I don't, I, I, I think we've, 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 loved him. I, I think I've said this before, but what I don't know is if I've said it on air or I've said it in those slightly creepy moments before we go on air. Right. I don't know if people realise how good he was. Right? Think Danny Alves with slightly better hair. 
<laughs> right? That's what Steve was. Steve was Danny Alves. I remember, I think it's 87, 88. I've called I'm Danny Alves all kinds of names recently. <laughs> Did you ever call him Steve Nichol? I mean, that, that, that really would be pushing it. I'll swap bank books with him. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, and, it's worth a try. And, of course, we're going for dinner tonight, and one of your friends is here, one of your childhood Reno, friends. Yeah. And one of his first questions was what? Can we see that said law? That was it, I genuinely. Said, way, I said, you've no idea. I said, we're going for dinner with him tonight. It was absolutely made up. What about Gab? Did he mention Gab? Well, I didn't know Gab was coming. <laughs> or I would have said Gab would do that. <laughs> was it. Well, you didn't say Gab because you wanted your mate to turn up still, right? <laughs> uh, I think this is the last time you're going to be with us, Sid, uh, before the final. So it's yeah, I think it probably get, is, yeah. Uh, an insight how you think it will go and what do you think the score will be. I don't know, do I? Um, oh, I mean, so... that's the obvious thing to say. But look, I wonder about pressure and I wonder about the sense of, of obligation and, and whether Liverpool come into this under more pressure than Spurs, whether Spurs the way they got to the final, whether the, the unlikeliness of it now look, no one expected Liverpool to get to the final right? so it is unlikely that they're there but they were in a final last year, obviously everybody knows that they, they've been the second best team in England this year, very very close to City, a very long way, I think it's 26 points ahead of Spurs so I, I think, I might be wrong about that um, Gab I'm, I'm wrong on lots of things Yeah, Gab would know but unfortunately Gab's not here um, so I feel like Liverpool go into this in a position where they'll have more tension than Spurs. I feel like that's the case, but the problem is that football quite often makes us look idiots. In fact, yeah. pretty much every time. Well, pretty much this show does. A I mean, this show does that. I don't need football to do that. No, do I? exactly. Uh, Sid and Stevie, thank you very much. We're off to dinner now. Uh, we'll head back to you in the studio. Oh, yes, indeed. To bon appetit, guys. Uh, more from them tomorrow, much more from the Jim, I could have listened to the start of that conversation. <laughs> I could have listened to it all night. Well, uh, oh, it was riveting stuff. Uh, Sid, as you, as you heard, not on the show again before, until after the final. Ali, the same applies to you, apparently. So we've we got to get your thoughts oh. on the final before well, uh, we well, leave. Well, what I can tell you is that whoever is in charge of babysitting or chaperoning Stevie Nichol mm. post-final, uh, keep a... Very close eye on TV because I think this is Liverpool all day long. I think it's uh, it's not close. It's an really? enjoyable, stress-free final for Liverpool. They're a better team than Spurs, and if they play at their very best, I think Liverpool runs away with this. Mm. We're going to get your prediction tomorrow. You think Liverpool easily? Oh, it's, tell you what, mm -hmm. I'm just not going to be able to wait. <laughs> I'm so excited. Is it, is it Can we get somebody on for some nostalgia? Like I've not <laughs> met for years or something, like or you know, a hero. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh, we're going for a meal tonight. And Great. he's going to be there. Oh, this is magic. It we... feels like it's ideal for and you. And tomorrow, now. we'll have Stevie Nick, Nick eating food he doesn't normally eat. <laughs> Wowza! <laughs> tell you what, groundbreaking stuff. Did we tell you we're doing Craig Burley, This Is Your Life tomorrow in, in, oh. in, in place of the show? <laughs> what about his heroes? What about his heroes? <laughs> no. I so enjoyed but that. I so enjoyed the boys in Madrid tonight. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to sleep. All right. Oh, seriously, it was just... It was I thought it was emotional. Much what? more to come ahead of the final tomorrow. We'll see you then. All righty. Time to give it a Sebi Salazar. All righty. For extra time. Isn't that what he does? <laughs> no, that's not it. No. No? No, that's not it. Something along those lines. Plus, it doesn't quite match your personality. No, no, no. It's not... You, no. Got, you got different I, things going on. That's not one D of them. Different tagline required. Yeah. Uh, Craig, Craig, Ali here in the studio. Out to Madrid we go because we got, look at this. We got Dan, we got Sid, we got Stevie. Yeah, Stevie, first question to you. Uh, what would you say to the players before the kickoff of the Champions League final if you were manager of Liverpool? I'm not listening. Well, I think, the, I, think the, I think the only thing you've got to say to them is just remember. You know all the, the good things that we've done all year. You know the reasons that we're actually in this final, uh, and take the the form in the league through it as well. You just all you're doing is trying to get your players to go out on the field and do what they've done all season. And they haven't always won games, but they've they've never not come out punching when the bell's gone. You know sometimes they've lost games, but they haven't not played well. So I I actually don't I'm, I'm not worried about Liverpool at all. How come, how come when Adrian was asking you that question, you were looking off to your right-hand side? <laughs> was somebody walking by with some giant cake or something? <laughs> Don't ask. Why are you asking? This can only lead to trouble, this question. Uh, it was actually a chef. <laughs> What's he looking at? What are you looking at? I'm starving. <laughs> um, Craig, has, has Sergio Ramos evolved into a performance I can, art piece? Well, forget Sergio Ramos. At, at I come back from my working holiday, and my missus told me that Nickel. He told my missus that he'd lost eight pounds. 
I, I think not he having had. it. You're not having it? No. No, he's been off the beer. He's been, he's been, uh, must be the camera finding fish. <laughs> Stevie, uh, <laughs> true, isn't it? I, I've witnessed it. Eight pounds at least. I'll tell you what, I'm going to be putting eight pounds back on over the next three days. <laughs> I can assure you that. <laughs> not if he feeds his snails, he you One won't. One another. I'll, put, I'll tell you what, I'll put money on it. He, he won't spend eight pounds when he's there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's tighter than a dead heat. <laughs> So about that Sergio Ramos question. Yeah, what was Farik, it? Farik, has, has he <laughs> evolved into a performance art piece? Didn't he say it's a very, it's very were, esoteric question. I was there following, from, actually, it was Derek Farik. Corrigan, a colleague from um, Madrid. I was following somebody's quotes. Did Ramos not say, if I was Ramos, I'd give Ramos? He was talking about himself. <laughs> I'd give himself a, a, a contract yes. for life. Yeah. Yes. What a plum. Referring to himself in the... <laughs> what uh, an absolute tool. In the third person. In, uh, uh, what a plum. <laughs> yes. What an absolute tool. Yeah. I'm sure that's not quite the view in Madrid, is it, Dan? Uh, so they're talking about Sergio Ramos. Sid can't hear anything. I can't hear. I mean, this is so why I'm standing here with this just... blank look on my face. But <laughs> it's normal. one of the reasons why I'm standing here with that look on my face. Uh, what do uh, Real Madrid fans make of Sergio Ramos? <laughs> Tell them to keep it short, Dan. I mean, today, I think they make of Sergio Ramos that this is baffling that it makes no sense, but obviously once they get them back on the pitch, they'll, they'll, they'll treat them as they, they always have. Um, some of what Ramos said today was just absurd, and that, that, I, I love this whole idea that he doesn't know what's going on. Although, I'll tell you what's going on, mate. Your president has thrown you to the lions. And actually, as you say, the question of, you know, what, is, what are the fans think of Ram Not Ramos? The if the fans of the Lions, the one thing is that's happened is he hasn't been mauled yet. I think there will be some who will be uneasy about it, but for the most part, it, it's Sergio Ramos. Yeah. And you know what? Everyone knows Ramos so well. They've known him for such a long time. We've been through scenarios not quite like this before, but similar. That I think everyone kind of sort of nudges each other with the elbow and goes, nah, it's Sergio, isn't it? He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Front of the Lions, front of the Wolves. So, so because it's Sergio, he's allowed to behave like an idiot. Then. Right. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. I just wanted to uh, make sure that that's what we're working with. If it if it goes to penalties, Ali, it's this like when he's waiting for us to set up. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> that's true. Dan. Yeah. yeah. By uh, the way, I can tell you, uh, and you lot were not only were you late today yep. to do this show, uh, you couldn't even dial in number <laughs> okay. to get linked up to I us here in Bristol. And I, I, was received your, I received your beautiful text message. And Craig, I was which listening was, which to your every, I was listening to your every word, of, including those not in mind, like Sid Law and Marcotti. Well, I could hear everything. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Sid I could hear him talking about about his mate that he his unwanted mate that he took to dinner with us. <laughs> Right, come on, next question. Come another question. I, 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 come I can on. tell you guys that it's very pleasant over here right now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's get back to the game. Ali, yeah. 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 Table left table to, listen, for I know Sid can can't hear us. I know Sid can't hear us. We've got the time. Quite, quite frankly, I don't care because he's all he's talked about tonight. In fact, take the mic off and tell him to go. All he's talked about tonight is getting a, a getting on the bus or on the metro to the to the restaurant. Uh -huh. He's got a table booked. Yeah. I thought <laughs> I thought you wanted to get home. You're telling us to hurry up. We're going to well, shut up. Well, listen, you were late for this, so we're going to stay here. I don't care. <laughs> right. Penalties. If it goes to penalties, which team has a better chance to win? Our cigar. He he fancies Spurs if it goes to penalty. Ali, how come? I don't know. He just says Spurs for me. Oh, okay, fantastic. It's not yeah. going to penalties. It's, it's not getting that far. No. I got a sneaking feeling it will. You know, but uh, okay. Well, then, we'll, we'll then why are you asking me the question? Well, then? because Cigar wanted your answer, not mine. Uh, well, Bio uh, uh, says, <laughs> "Is Barcelona, Craig, making a mistake by keeping Valverde? Not only for the big humiliations, but also the style of play." Probably, yeah. Yeah. All right, on we go. <laughs> uh, oh, what, one for, for you, Dan. Maybe you can relay this to Sid. If all of us did a general knowledge quiz, who would win? Marco plumps for Sid. Didn't, mm. he, didn't he? Wasn't he on University right. Challenge once or something like that? <laughs> Uh, Stevie's just getting accosted by Liverpool fans here. Oh, okay. If it was a general knowledge quiz between all the FC people... Say who... that again, sorry, there was a motorbike going past. <laughs> this segment's brilliant. <laughs> if there was a Those general... people over there, by the way, Let were asking talk. you Let if you were the... Jamie Carragher. Let me ask the question. I can, I can confirm that he's not. Go on, ask questions. If question. it was a general knowledge quiz between all the FC people, would you win? No, Gab would win. Is Gab cleverer than you? Yeah, I mean, yeah. everyone's cleverer than me. Well. Yeah, Gabriel Wimbo Moss. You've seen me. Hang on. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've University seen me challenge. in a general knowledge quiz. <laughs> yeah, that's very You've true. seen how bad I am. Yeah. There is, there's, there's no hope for me. No. I think what we should do is put all our nerds, our journalists, in, in a room 
and uh, just let them argue about it. Mm. Yeah. You know I mean? Like who would win? Yeah. <laughs> but how come how come Gab would win if Mark Ogden is a senior writer and Gab is not? I don't quite mm. understand that. How, nope. uh, how does Mark climb up mm. above Gab? If, well, I'm just saying. I'm just asking yeah. the question. All right. Finally, so uh, you don't have the answer for that. No, I, I, I. Okay. That. Zero out of ten in that department. Stevie, uh, does he prefer scouse stew or snails? Asks intelligent Guna. Oh. <laughs> scouse, absolutely. Scouse All stew. day, every day. Yeah. What's a, what's a, what's a scouse stew? Danger. What's a scouse stew? Maybe, maybe you can enlighten us to, as to what the ingredients are in a scouse stew, Stevie. Well, scouse is basically all the leftovers put in a hot pot for the next day. That's basically what it is. Mm. Anything that hasn't been eaten, basically. Whatever's left over for the night before gets put in a pot all together and then reheated the next day. Mm. Scouse, pan of scouse. All right, we got it. You see the excitement in his <laughs> face when he's talking about it? I'm thirsty. Yeah. I'm getting thirsty here. I bet they've got it an Irish bar. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Couldn't possibly. No, no. We're going to an Argentinian for a nice steak. All right. Ooh. Oh. Well done. Very no. well done. <laughs> oh. Nice. Careful if you go with Gab. Yeah. he will get mad at yeah. you. Well, Gab, 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 Gab tends Gab, to take Gab over. might not allow me to eat it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, good. You're boring me now. Should we let him go? No, right. just... No, can we can go. we go? Come to the watchers. D dinner reservation. God, just do it right. then, though. Boys, you are free and clear. Yeah, Dine away. Listen, have a day, have a day 